have created this short production to showcase recordings of poetry readings made by my grandmother, Frances Nelson Tillman, in the 1940s. Frances grew up as a child actress, touring the West with her family in the Andrews Dramatic Troupe. They traveled from Ohio to Montana, giving shows in the late 1880s. My grandmother wrote about these travels in A Little Girl Goes Barnstorming, one of the chapters in her autobiographical sketches. As an adult, my grandmother moved to Baltimore, Maryland, and lived there most of her life. She maintained her love of acting and was organizer and director for a dramatic group of women from 1941 to 1951. At some point in the 1940s, the women decided to capture some of their favorite poems using then-modern technology, recording on disc. I have this collection of recordings and some extra needles left over from making the records. Frances memorized many poems as a child and insisted her children and grandchildren do the same. For this recording, she picked stanzas from several classic poems she knew well. Lochinvar by Sir Walter Scott, and then The Splendor Falls and the Brook by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Unfortunately, the recording clips at the end of the brook. Oh, young Lochinvar is come out of the west. Through all the wide borders, his steed was the best. And save his good broadsword, he weapon had none. He rode all unarmed, and he rode all alone. So faithful in love, and so dauntless in war. There never was night like the young Lochinvar. And now The Splendor Falls and the Brook by Sir Alfred Lord Tennyson. The splendor falls on castle walls and snowy summits, old in story. The long light shakes across the lake, and the wild cataract leaps in glory. I chatter over stony ways, in little shafts and pebbles. I bubble into eddying bays, I babble on the pebbles. With many a curve my banks I fret, by many a field and fallow, and many a fairy foreland set. With willow, weed, and mallow. Frances loved dialect writing and even practiced this style of writing in her own fiction and poetry. She selected two poems by Thomas Augustine Daly, or T.A. Daly, a 20th century Philadelphia journalist and poet. Daly is best known for his humorous verse in Italian or Irish-American dialect. While not well known today, during his lifetime his verses were well read. Frances first recites The Laggard in Love. Giuseppe de Barber, he's greater for mash. He got a de bigger, de blacker mustache, good clothes and good style and plate and a good cash. Whenever Giuseppe is walk on the street, the people they talk a how knobby, how neat, how soft are the hands and how small are the feet. He raises his hat and he shake his curls and he smile with teeth so shiny like pearls. Oh, many the hearts of the silly young girls he got a. Yes, plenty he got her, but not a Carlotta. Giuseppe the barber, he make the eye and like the steam engine, puff her and sigh, for catch a Carlotta when she is go by. Carlotta, she walk a wee nose in the air and look through Giuseppe with far away stare as if she no see there is somebody there. Giuseppe the barber, he got her the cash. He got her the clothes and the bigger mustache. He got her the seal young girls for the mash, but not a, you bet my life, not a Carlotta, I got her. Here is an illustration of Giuseppe the Barber in the collected volume Madrigale. Both The Laggard in Love and the next selection, Pasquale Passes, appear in Madrigale. Rosa Beppe, she's a gat temper that's so strong and hot, he's no matter what you say. If she's gonna have her way, she's gonna have it. You can bet every cent you got on that. Think she's gonna mind her pop? Huh. She ain't even afraid of cop. Even devil no could stop Rosa Beppe when she got foolish things inside her hat. That's a why her pop is scare. That's a why he growl and swear when he see her walking out with Pasquale from the south. If, like Beppe, you are come from the country north of Rome, you are know that men from south ain't so worth to talk about. It's no wonder Beppy swear, growl and grumble like a bear. When the Padre Angelo come and see him act and so, he is so 
surprise and want to know. Beppy tell him. Oh, he say, I will speak with her today. So no more she's walking out with Pasquale from the south. As you can probably tell, I had lots of fun putting this short sequence together. Listening to my grandmother brought back wonderful memories of my grandparents and Till Manor. Hope you've enjoyed this as well.